Have you ever thought that maybe this heartbreak is to get rid of that ugly quality that's in you? Ugh, we're really hurting in the heartbreak because we're afraid of what's going to come next. Is there anything that's going to come next? But you're in a stressful marriage, in a bad marriage, in a marriage that's like, ugh. Have you ever thought of that, parents? Asking your children, is there someone you prefer? You really want something? The hudge is the time. The hudge is the one that separates the juice from the froth. Way of Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the YouTube channel. And today... Inshallah, we have a really, really good program for you. Today, we're going to be talking about how I personally overcame or got over my ex or my breakup or a heartbreak or something of that nature. So if you're someone who is going through that right now or has been through that, you'll vibe. If you're going through it right now, you'll get some help. Uh, the rest of you, if you've never experienced it, maybe you learn from my mistakes, learn from my errors, and just really see how without Allah, a person truly isn't complete. Uh, but before we get started with that, just a reminder, Ramadan is less than uh, two months away, closely approaching one month. Um, and today's Asma al-Husna is related directly to something that would help you get over your ex or your breakup or your heartbreak or whatever. And uh, that name is Al-Wahhab. Al-Wahhab. Now, you know, some, some believe that this name is loosely translated as generous, even though it's not. Uh, the one who gives gifts, yes. But that's not what Al-Wahhab is. Al-Wahhab, first and foremost, how honored are we to even say that name? Let's just first appreciate that. Um, Al-Wahhab is the one who gives gifts even though you don't deserve it. Even though we don't deserve it, he keeps giving gifts. And he keeps giving gifts and not expecting anything in return. Whew, that's tough. That's tough. How hard is it for us to not even get a thank you from someone? Allah is expecting nothing in return. People are like, I prayed to Allah, I needed something. Allah never, Allah gave you without needing anything back. But you pray to Him when you need something and you get impatient when it doesn't work. Have you ever thought that maybe this heartbreak is to get rid of that ugly quality that's in you? Ugh. Imagine hitting Allah up only when you need something. Imagine you have friends like that, right? You have people like that. When you get a text from them, when you get a message from them, when you get a call from them, you're like, they need something. Some of you curb it. Oh, may Allah forgive us. Do you know the reward of helping a Muslim brother or sister in need? Relieving a Muslim brother or sister in pain? Like, do you know the reward of that? If you did and you understood it, you'd help more. I'd help more, not you. I'd help more. I'd help more. I'm the problem, not you. I'm the problem. We're going to talk about how to sort of live by this name very soon too. But let's get into this video about the heartbreak. I'm not going to get into details about who this heartbreak was with. But it was for me personally a compilation or a combination of a lot of of situations and circumstances when it came to women and love, quote unquote. And by the way, it is freezing right now. It is minus three, but the wind chill is like minus ten, bro. It's 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 for for the Americans out there. That's twenty seven Fahrenheit. I'm learning more about the metric system. I've realized that that's where the success is. You can't you can't just be boofed into just thinking about non metric systems. You gotta I gotta learn about this. Okay, so yeah, I'm trying to learn. Okay, I personally struggled. A lot. And I'm going to obviously give you tips on how to get out of it, right? Uh, three particular t uh, tips. And I'm not going to try to make this video really long. I'm, I'm going to try my best. Um, but you're like, SQ, just get to the point then. Stop wasting time, right? You could have been talking about this the whole time. But then, then you must be new to this channel. So welcome. you got to display patience. What about Musa al Islam? The Messenger of Islam said that he wishes that Musa al Islam would have demonstrated more patience when he met the, the, the knowledgeable friend. In Surah Kaf, you could tell me who that person is in the comment section below. That if he was more patient, we would have learned more gems from this man. And that man said, how can you, excuse me, <laughs> how can you be patient with me when you don't know what's to come next? And that's the reason we're impatient, right? We're really hurting in the heartbreak because we're afraid of what's going to come next. Is there anything that's going to come next? Am I actually going to find the love? Am I really going to get married again? Why is that your top priority? You want love? You want affection? So you're going to someone else for it? 
Can't you see how that's a disaster and, and a problem waiting to happen? You got to go to the marriage complete. Oh, but SQ, marriage is half your deen. You're right, it's half. What's the other half? The five pillars. Being a complete worshiper of Allah. Be that first and then complete the other side of your deen or your, or, 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 your, or, or your physiology. Everything, love, children, everything, it's a blessing. But don't go in there looking for the help. You got to go in there for yourself. You understand? Like people go in a relationship 80%, the other people are the 20 but the problem is the other people are also struggling and they're anticipating the same thing from you. And because you couldn't provide them that emotional support, now you get blamed for like wanting to leave a marriage. But do I blame you? No. It's tough. Especially if you didn't expect it coming. You're young. You don't really know. But you're in a stressful marriage, in a bad marriage, in a marriage that's like, oh. This is why parents need to do a better job uh, picking the right spouses for their children. Wallahi, they need more input from their children. They need to ask their children, is there someone that you prefer? Have you ever thought of that, parents? Asking your children, is there someone you prefer? If you are a parent out there who does do that, good for you. MashaAllah, I'm proud of you. May Allah increase you and bless the marriages of your children. Ameen. Take mashra, you know, take... Okay, anyways. Okay, SQ, whatever. How'd you get over your break? Just tell me. Just get to the point of this video. I gotta go. I got some classes to do. Okay. The first part is recognizing that nothing... This is the first tip, okay? Well, it's the third tip working backwards to some degree. But just use these tips, bro. Like, whatever. Recognizing that nothing happens without the permission of Allah. That's the first advice I'd like to give you. This is something I never thought about in the moment. If you're in a breakup right now and you're getting this message, you're blessed already. Well, like you're blessed already. I was in a situation where I did not believe that. I didn't know about that. I had no Muslim friend to help me through that. I just thought I had to go through it myself. And you see how I dealt with it. You see how I dealt with it. So my first advice to you, I'm, learn, I'm teaching you from my wisdoms of, of my mistakes. Recognize that nothing happens without the permission of Allah. Once you do that, you will feel like your world isn't spinning so much and it's not too much chaos. It's, it's a part of the plan of Allah. It's all a part of the plan of Allah. Okay. The next tip after that is decoding. What lessons could you have learned from that relationship about yourself? Not about how terrible they were. Nope. About yourself. About yourself. What are some lessons? Where could you have been better? What could you have done better? Stop thinking about what they could have done better. That's what got you in this situation. You were thinking about them, 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 fix, 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 fix. But what about all those fixes that you needed to do too? That's not fair, right? So find out. Find out. Oh God, it's getting cold. Allahu Akbar. Make dua for me, guys. I'm sitting in the cold for you guys. No, I'm sitting in the cold for the sake of Allah, not you guys. You guys. I love you guys, but it's for the sake of Allah. I can't feel my fingers. I got frostbite in my fingers once. I can't feel the... Did you know that? SubhanAllah. Now you know. And those are gunshots. I live in the hood, guys. You can tell. <laughs> but I'm not affiliating the hood with gunshots because that's not true. That's all it is. There's the, you know, uh, you know, Quran in the hood social experiment coming out soon, inshallah. Inshallah. So, make dua. Make dua. What's the final tip, SQ? Do you remember the other two? I hope so. The last tip is to realize that this is all a test. This is all one giant lesson from Allah. So you go from knowing that this is part of the plan of Allah, accepting that, knowing that there was lessons for you to learn in, 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 in your trials, and then realizing that this whole thing is the test. It is designed to develop you, to sculpt you, to make you better, to make you more sincere, to make you more, 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 more focused in the direction of Allah. This was the biggest blessing and guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could ever give you. And once you start realizing that, you'll feel empowered over your situation. I'm not saying it makes it less tough. I'm not saying it makes it less difficult. No. Those are all what gets you to Jannah. That's all the rewards that you're going to collect on the way to get you to Jannah. But bury your head in the Quran. 
Like if your Quran doesn't have tear residue on your Quran, on the Mus'haf, you're not doing it right. No disrespect. I'm not, please forgive me. But I mean, bury yourself in the Quran. You really want something to hajj the time. You really want something to hajj the time. The hajjit is the one that separates the juice from the froth. The ones who are serious about what they want, they're up for the hajjit. It separates the juice from the froth. That's what you need to do to be successful. But not many will do it. And that's why not many are successful. But even if you're at the hajjit, ask you, why hasn't my dua been coming true? Maybe you're doing the hajjit just for that dua. No. Do it because it's Allah's worthy of waking up and breaking your sleep earlier for Him. And in return, Allah is going to give you. Allah is Al Wahab. He gives you, you don't deserve it. How many times have you missed Fajr? Yet, how many times have Allah answered your du'as? Huh? Allahu Akbar. Because He is Al Wahab. He just gives you, even though you don't deserve it, man. Because there's other qualities about Him as well. We're so honored to know about Allah. That's why we should wake up. Allah, you deserve it. You ask nothing from me, Allah. I'm dirt, Allah. I'm a giant sperm drop, Allah. And yet, you're still blessing me? You're still forgiving me? You still love me? You still care about me? Wow. Wow. What kind of master is this who forgives his servant and slave? Yet the servant and slave is oblivious to his master's needs because the master has no needs. He is al ghani. Needs nothing from you. He just gives. He gives. But this is all going to change. The day of judgment. That's when we're going to see a wrath of Allah that no one's ever seen. May Allah protect us from Allah's wrath. The same way Allah's mercy and love is just His wrath. He's destroyed nations. COVID. What's COVID? It could have. Allah had mercy on us. There's Muslims over here. But there are some shaheed as well too. May Allah protect us and have mercy on us. These are the bonus clips. If you've left already... Thank you. If, if, if you got some help from this, thank you. Thank you for watching. I don't need anything from you at all. Not that I'm not in need. It's just that I only ask Allah. That's just what it is. And Allah has really surrounded me around the awesomest people ever. I love you guys. My fingers are getting really tingly, guys, because of that frostbite. Maybe that's a story for another time. Love you all for the sake of Allah. Till next time, I'm out.